Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nikita here and today in this video we are going to learn about the top 10 images in abdominal radiographs. So this is very very important and we are going to discuss the most probable images and otherwise also the images that we should be able to identify on abdominal radiographs. So uh, before we proceed, a quick update on the free test uh, that we have. You have number of free tests which are available on the platform. While enrolling, if you are asked for a code, you can use the code Dr. Nikita. We also have the All India Mock Test which is planned on uh, 27th March at 9 a.m. Sunday. And uh, we are also launching the previous year question bank, something which is going to be very beneficial in your last months of preparation. So we have past three year papers, not only of NEET PG, INICT, but also of FMGE that is going to really help you in understanding what topics have been asked recently. The plus subscription and the iconic subscription, which is an academy with prep ladder. And we have the new batches that we have launched recently for the NEET PG high yield MCQ marathon batch. And also for FMGE, where we have your high yield revision and the MCQ batch. Now we have your two months plus subscription also, which is available and the light subscription as well, which gives you test series and the question bank. While enrolling, if you are asked for a code, you can use the code Dr. Nikita, which will give you additional 10% off while subscribing. So starting with the images here, the most important in abdominal radiograph, something which was asked in recent NEET PG as well, identifying first the uh, bowel loops, whether it's a small bowel loop or a large bowel loop. So this is a small bowel loop that we are seeing which is dilated. Basically, this is small bowel obstruction where we see this dilated bowel loops with this complete rings which are called as volvulae coniventus. Why do I call it small bowel? Because I see this volvulae coniventus which are complete rings, right? Which are complete rings. When do we call the small bowel dilated? When it is more than 3 centimeters, right? We have the 3, 6, 9 rule. 3 centimeters for the small bowel, 6 centimeters for the large bowel, and 9 centimeters for cecum, which is the most distensible part in the GIT. Now, this one, which are the bowel loops that we are seeing that dilated here? This one, if you appreciate, these are incomplete projections. So these are hostrations, and that tells us that this is the large intestine which is dilated. Now, looking at the radiograph, could you tell me what is the cause of the large bowel dilatation here in this patient? Whenever you see the bowel loops dilated, we should always check this rectal area, right? We should always check this pelvic, the rectal area. We don't see the air. Air appears black on radiograph. Uh, normally, we should see the air. If we don't see the air, that means there is some obstruction above. Or here you are seeing there's something impacting here in the rectum. So this is basically fecal impaction which has caused here the proximal large bowel dilatation. So the cause of large bowel dilatation here is the fecal impaction, which we can confirm by the manual examination or the anoscopy basically. So this is what is the same radiograph previously, which is given this uh, magnified image here. So in the rectum, we don't see the air. There is something impacting that is the fecal impaction. So summary of the abnormal bowel gas pattern, how will you identify whether it is small bowel obstruction? large bowel obstruction or it is just an ileus. Now, whenever it is ileus, that means basically it's not a mechanical obstruction, it's a functional obstruction. So that is why there would be air which will be present in the rectum and the sigmoid. When it's a mechanical obstruction, small bowel or large bowel, the air in the rectum would be absent. So basically the concept here, that if there is a mechanical obstruction, the air will not be able to go ahead the air would be absent in the rectum. If it is just functional obstruction, that is ileus, the air would go ahead and we would see the air present in the rectum, right? So this is how we differentiate ileus from the obstruction. Generalized ileus is basically seen in a post-operative patient. You will have the history of recent surgery. Localized ileus may come like your sentinel loop sign. So whichever organ is inflamed, basically adjacent to that, we would see a sentinel loop which is dilated. So based on where the sentinel loop is located, we might make a diagnosis on abdominal radiographs, which organ might be possibly inflamed. Like if it's cholecystitis, it would be the sentinel loop in the right upper quadrant. If it is appendicitis, it would be the right lower quadrant, right? Now, when it is ileus, basically if it is localized, we said the sentinel loop, two to three distended loops is what we would be seeing. 
and if it is generalized the multiple distended bowel loops the small bowel large bowel both would be distended if it is small bowel obstruction right let's say there's a small bowel obstruction and you have the large bowel if it's a small bowel obstruction so beyond this point basically you will not see the air which is coming so the small bowel loops proximal would be dilated but the large bowel will not be distended right there would be no air in the large bowel while in large bowel obstruction you will have the dilated large bowel loops and there might be air in the small bowel if this ileocecal valve is not competent right going to the next image here what do you think is the diagnosis in this image what do you think is this image showing so basically again we can see this distended bowel loops with the complete rings here that is basically small bowel obstruction if you look at this image there is some air here in the right upper quadrant towards the liver that is basically your pneumobilia right i hope this gives you a clue small bowel obstruction with pneumobilia and if i zoom this image here you can see there's some calcified thing here which is basically getting superimposed on the pelvic bone actually it's in the bowel this is uh, basically your ectopic gall stone right this is basically the ectopic gall stone so basically this is a triad which is known as riglers triad again your recent neat pg question so basically this is the riglers triad right the ectopic gall stone small bowel obstruction and pneumobilia so this is what is shown here as well the gallstone this is basically gallstone alias and you have the air in the biliary tree that is pneumobilia next image again a very important image might be asked in your exam what are we seeing in this image so in this image this area is very important where we are seeing this white line which is basically the calcification in the right upper quadrant following the shape of the gall bladder so basically this is calcification along the gall bladder so this is called as porcelain gall bladder okay this is called as porcelain gall bladder which is pre malignant and that's why the treatment is cholecystectomy so remember if you see this calcification along the gall bladder porcelain gall bladder next one where are we seeing the calcification in both these images you can see this triple sort of calcification in this area which is basically the area of pancreas going from the right side to the left side so whenever you see pancreatic calcification remember c for c think of chronic calcific pancreatitis okay think of chronic calcific pancreatitis chronic pancreatitis also has dilated pancreatic duct so that's why the investigation for chronic pancreatitis is for the duct we do mrcp or ercp right so for chronic pancreatitis mrcp ercp is very important next one the question asked in recent fmg exam what are we seeing in this radiograph so basically in this radiograph we are seeing this air in the bowel right this is the air in the bowel that we are seeing and suddenly you can see that the air is cut off here we see the air fluid level beyond this point there is no air so this is the large bowel the transverse colon and suddenly here on the left side it is cut off the air is cut off this is called as colon cut off sign and what gives this colon cut off sign acute pancreatitis do not specific it might be seen in any cause of colonic obstruction but what organ inflammation basically pancreatitis through the phrenic colic ligament it goes to your left sided colon that bowel goes into ileus because of the inflammation and we see this air fluid level so remember colon cut off sign acute pancreatitis next image here what are we seeing in this next image a bit of a difficult image but if you look at this image very very carefully it's very important to make this diagnosis if i zoom in this image um right let me let me zoom in this image and show you this so basically on the right side if you see this there is this triangle shaped air between the liver and the kidney the morrison's pouch that is basically the air which you are seeing in that morrison's pouch again the zoomed in image you can see this air in the morrison's pouch this is called as the doge cap sign which is basically the free air in the peritoneum morrison's pouch this is basically pneumoperitoneum right this is a sign seen in pneumoperitoneum again very very important
Next one, so in that same patient of pneumoperitoneum, this is where we could see the free air under diaphragm, which is a very, very subtle finding here, but we need to pick that up. Sometimes the pneumoperitoneum can be very obvious like this. The free air, air is black in color on radiograph. The free air under diaphragm. So this is pneumoperitoneum, very, very important image and a frequently asked image. Almost all exams will have pneumoperitoneum image, right? What is the best x-ray? It is the chest x-ray erect. If the patient cannot stand erect, then we do left lateral decubitus with horizontal beam right we do left lateral decubitus so that the air goes on the right side liver gives a good contrast and you do in decubitus horizontal beam all right next one what are we seeing here so this was a child who presented with rif pain tenderness at the mcburney's point first periumbilical pain then going to rif classical history of appendicitis so in the olden days where uh, ultrasound ct was not available if we saw this finding, which is basically this calcification in the right iliac fossa in a patient of uh, RIF pain, this is suggestive of appendicolith, right? Even the calcification in the RIF, appendicolith, which predisposes to, if it obstructs the appendix, it leads to appendicitis, right? It leads to appendicitis. So that is what is shown here, the calcification overlapping the iliac bone. Remember that in radiograph, because it's two-dimensional, there is superimposition of structures. Something which looks like in the iliac bone, basically, it might not be in the iliac bone. It might be in the bowel loops, right? It might get superimposed. Next one, what do we see here? What do you think is the diagnosis in this image? So basically, in this image, the diagnosis that we have is you can see this air-filled, air-filled bowel loops, right? In between that, you have this line. So basically, the diagnosis here, this is your coffee bean sign of, coffee bean sign of sigmoid volvulus. So that is what is represented here. These are the air-filled bowel loops. And in the center, you see that edematous wall. Basically, the three lines which are converging here, this is your coffee bean sign you can see the limbs, the inverted U sign also as it is called. It goes towards the pelvis, right? It goes towards the pelvis. You can see this fluid in the lower part in the rectum in a case of sigmoid volvulus, right? So this is the coffee bean sign which is seen with sigmoid volvulus. Okay, coffee bean sign seen in sigmoid volvulus. It is also called as omega sign or the bent inner tube sign. Now, when we put the rectal tube in this patient and we decompressed, you can see that dilated bowel loop is gone. So basically, this is decompression done with the rectal tube insertion. That's the first thing that we need to do in sigmoid volvulus, decompression, right? We need to do decompression. Next image here, what are we seeing in this child? What do you think is the diagnosis and what are we seeing? So basically here in the bowel loop, outlining the bowel loop is this air, right? You can see this black air outlining the bowel loop. So this is basically pneumatosis intestinalis, right? This is pneumatosis air intestinalis in the bowel wall, which can be seen in necrotizing enterocolitis, right? What staging do we use for NEC? Bell's staging, right? Bell's staging. This is your necrotizing enterocolitis, the ischemic bowel, gangrenous that leads to air, that is pneumatosis intestinalis. When we did a CD in this patient, you can see this air all around the bowel in the bowel wall. That basically tells you this is gangrenous, ischemia leading to gangrene, gas formation. This is pneumatosis intestinalis. All right. Next one, what are we seeing in this patient? This is your transverse colon. You can see these hostrations which are thickened and edematous. So this is your edema basically of the bowel wall which might be seen in any case of colitis. Ischemic colitis, it could be your pseudomembranous colitis. It could also be your inflammatory bowel disease. So basically this is the thumb printing that we are seeing. The thumb printing because of the thickened Hostrations. So, thumbprint sign seen in your colitis, ischemic colitis, pseudomembranous colitis, IBD, in all colitis it might be seen. So, when we do a barium study in such patient, this is the barium enema. 
you can see all this is your thickened hostations basically. Okay, so we see the thickened hostations. Next one, what are we seeing in this image? So in this image, what is the prominent finding is that look at this bowel loop. You can see the bowel wall so clear that basically tells you that there is air inside and there is also air outside the bowel loop. And that is why the bowel wall is looking very, very clear. Basically air inside, air outside, black, black. And in middle, you have the white bowel wall. So black and black in between the white stands out. So this is whenever you see this very distinct bowel wall, like you are seeing here as well. You are seeing here as well. This is called as regular sign. Remember, it's not the regular triad. It is regular sign or it is also called as the double bowel sign. And this is suggestive of air outside. That is basically pneumoperitoneum, right? An important sign to pick up. So this is a sign of pneumoperitoneum. Okay, that is pneumoperitoneum. Next, this is the same image that is represented here. What is the next thing that we are seeing here? So again, what do we see here? There is this distended bowel loop. This was the first radiograph that was done. 24 hours later, the radiograph was done. You can see that the bowel loop first was very much on the left side. Then it has moved a bit. That basically shows that it is mobile. And you can see these hostations as well. You can see this distended bowel loop with the hostations going to the left upper quadrant. This is basically cecal volvulus, right? This is basically cecal volvulus. And this hostations basically gives it appearance like an embryo. So it is also called as the embryo sign okay it is also called as the embryo sign so cecal volvulus from the rif goes to the left upper sigmoid volvulus generally goes to the right upper so diagonal diagonally opposite basically okay next one what are we seeing in this patient basically you can see this air filled distended bowel loops one above the other this is your small bowel obstruction and in some cases, you might also see the loss of the volvulic conimentus when there is significant bowel obstruction. So basically, this is a patient who had appendicitis and had undergone surgery. And post-surgery, a patient is at more risk of intestinal obstruction, basically because of adhesions, right? Adhesions leading to small bowel obstruction is very common. It's a very common cause of small bowel obstruction. Again, you can see here that air in the rectum is absent because there is bowel obstruction. That is why the air in the rectum is absent. All right. What are we seeing here? The last image for this session. You can see that you, you are not able to appreciate a lot of air in the abdomen, right? The abdominal x-ray is not showing air. So basically, this is called as your gasless abdomen. So even this has been asked previously. Gasless abdomen can be seen in acute pancreatitis. Basically, it might be seen in your bowel obstruction when all the bowel loops are filled with fluid, there is no air. Acute pancreatitis, a lot of vomiting, there is no air gas basically in the bowel. So it's a non-specific finding. It, if it is an asymptomatic patient, we don't need to worry about that. But if it's a symptomatic patient, we need to think of bowel obstruction, right? And if you see in this radiograph, this structure that you see here, that is the psoas muscle right that's the psoas muscle that we are seeing there so yes that was about the abdominal radiographs so very very important ones that we have seen regular striad colon cutoff sign the various calcifications porcelain gallbladder chronic pancreatitis and we have seen the difference between bowel obstruction and ileus small bowel obstruction large bowel obstruction Pneumatosis intestinalis, pneumoperitoneum, that is uh, basically your doge cap sign, the regular sign. All of these are very, very important. Thank you so much for joining in for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye. Take care and keep studying, keep revising and keep winning. And yes, do join in for the free live classes on the app. At 5 p.m. daily is where I take on the app and also at 10 a.m. whenever I find some time. Thank you so much and goodbye. Take care.